So, Assassin's Creed Shadows has finally been revealed to the world and so many in the community, including myself, are incredibly excited about this game. However, a certain someone has caused massive outrage because of the narrative direction Ubisoft took with them, and now it's just spiralled into lots of hatred towards the game. But you know what? All of his hate is f stupid. In this video, I'm going to go over specifically why the game is being hated and why jumping on the hate train is completely pointless. If you find what I have to say interesting or even if you agree with me, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Assassin's Creed content. So what exactly is going on? In Assassin's Creed Shadows, we will get to play as Yasuke, who is a samurai of African origin and also a real person in history, making him the first ever non-fictional playable character in the franchise. But people are angry about this for two reasons. One. Having an African protagonist instead of a Japanese protagonist in a Japan themed game is woke apparently. And two, it is claimed that Yasuke was never a samurai, so this game is also historically inaccurate. Starting with the first argument, and I kind of agree with it to an extent. Months ago when this game was still called Project Red, it was rumoured that the game would have a black protagonist, and I got to admit when I first read that news, it made my eyes roll. But after realising that A, it was based on a real person, and B, he looks badass in the trailer, I am okay with it. Furthermore, this isn't the first time Yasuke has been used in media. He's been featured in comics, movies, animes, and children's books. A lot of people in Japan love Yasuke as he's essentially a folklore legend, a bit like Robin Hood to us in England. However, it's only now that he's getting hate because he features as a samurai in Assassin's Creed, instead of someone from Japan. Would I have preferred a Japanese samurai instead of Yasuke? Of course, because as we all know, there isn't a lot of Asian representation when it comes to the Assassin's Creed franchise. However, since the release of Ghost of Tsushima, I bet Ubisoft would want the experience to feel fresh and different rather than a similar character in a different story. Cause let's face it, PlayStation fans are going to be ready to compare their game to AC Shadows. However, if you are still strongly against playing as Yasuke, then you can always play as Nawe, the female Japanese shinobi, and the assassin in the game, of course. And if you have a problem with Nawe because she's a female, then you're just being pathetic, plain and simple. On to the second point, historical accuracy. A lot of these self-proclaimed history experts on the internet suggest that Yasuke was never a samurai. Instead, he was either a retainer or just an exotic slave. There's many different answers. So let's look at the facts. When we think of the word samurai, we immediately think of the warriors. But back in the 8th and 10th centuries, the term samurai was first used to describe mid to low ranking court administrators. And back then, it was mostly metaphorical, referring to their loyalty to the emperor. In today's terms, that's like someone receiving an MBE in the UK. So it is possible that Yasuke may have received the title of Samurai, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he ever donned the Samurai gear. However, as we all know, he wasn't as accurately documented as other historical figures, so there's no certain answer to what role he played in history. And it's that uncertainty that made Ubisoft want to protagonise him. His story was open-ended enough to allow for creativity, and just like us, we'll both be exploring the land of Japan for the first time. Uh, Assassin's Creed is a game about real human history. So why are we misrepresenting a main character in a game that heavily focuses on historical accuracy? <sighs> okay, since when has Assassin's Creed ever been 100% historically accurate? The franchise involves a magic apple, driving a 15th century tank, an advanced civilization, otherworldly weapons, inhuman abilities, mythical monsters, gods, immortality, and uh, yeah, last time I checked, being able to relive your ancestors' lives through DNA, yeah, that isn't possible either. Like, do you guys close your eyes when the game is booting up? Because every single Assassin's Creed game shares the same disclaimer. Inspired by historical events and characters, this work of fiction was designed, developed, and produced by a multicultural team of various religious faiths and beliefs. If Ubisoft telling you the game is fictional isn't enough, let me show you this clip from Assassin's Creed 1. Some of the stuff I'm seeing in the Animus, sometimes it seems wrong. Untrue, like the history is off somehow. It doesn't- It doesn't what, Mr. Miles? Match up with what you read on an online encyclopedia? 
what your high school history teacher taught you? Let me ask you something. Do these supposed experts have access to secret knowledge kept hidden from the rest of us? There are books, letters, documents, all sorts of source material from back then. Some of it seems to contradict what the Animus is showing me. Anyone can write a book, and they can put whatever they want on its pages. Anything. <laughs> Used to be we thought the world was flat. Some people still do. Yes, and they publish books about it. Or that the moon landing was a hoax. I believe there's also a book claims the world was created in seven days. A bestseller, too. Where's this going, Doc? The point, I suppose, is that you shouldn't trust everything you hear, everything you read. What's that your ancestors said? Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Yes, exactly. It's part of what makes the Animus so spectacular. The way Desmond Miles is reacting to his experience in the Animus is very similar to how most of you responded to the Assassin's Creed Shadows trailer. The things Desmond sees through his ancestors, or what we experience in the game, is how human history has always been within the Assassin's Creed universe. But we think it's wrong because we're more inclined to believe the things we've been taught in schools, books and source materials for centuries. It's like what Warren Vidic said, anyone can write a book and they can put whatever they want on its pages. What Ubisoft are doing with this game is neither wrong or different to what they usually do. Again, I would have personally preferred a Japanese samurai for the sake of Asian representation in the franchise, but I have faith in Ubisoft that they know exactly what they are doing. Just from looking at the concept art for the game, you can tell they are going to do an amazing job of designing the environment. And narratively, they always hire the right experts to bring the culture, the people and the world to life. For this game, they hired Sachi Schmidt Hori, the Associate Professor of Japanese Literature and Culture at Dartmouth College, New Hampshire. She's written a lot about feudal Japan and has won awards for her publications too. So I have no doubts in my mind that many aspects of this game will blow us away. To everyone hating on Assassin's Creed Shadows, you need to remember that this franchise isn't a biography, it's not a history book, nor a documentary. It's a work of fiction. If you want to hate something about Assassin's Creed Shadows, rage about the price for the game. Because the ridiculous price hike for Ubisoft's upcoming titles is something we can all agree is stupid and needs to stop. But no matter what you encounter throughout the series, especially things you greatly disagree with or find historically inaccurate, you have to remember the proverb we've been told for years. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have learned something new today, or if you agree with my side of this debate, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Much love everyone, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.